All right, let's go. What's up everybody? It's Duda on another motor vlog. Happy Tuesday. I hope all of you wonderful souls are having a good day. Today has been a weird ass day uh, at my household. I mean pretty much everything was normal, you know, got up early, make some breakfast, you know, normal routine, everything. And around 11 slash 12, I got a yell slash scream from my mother from downstairs. And I'm like, oh God, what did I do this time? Like, am I in trouble? You know, what did I do this time? And I, and I hear from my mom, Kevin, get outside, there's a raccoon. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And like, maybe for some people, encountering a raccoon, you know, it's kind of like a, a normal, kind of normal experience. But for where we live in the in kind of the middle of nowhere, we have never seen a raccoon on our property ever. And bear in mind, this is just afternoon, and raccoons typically are never—they're not out and about. They're they're a nocturnal type animal. And so I'm like, ah, oh, shit. You know, I gotta deal with this, you know, right now. I don't really know what to expect from this raccoon. So I walk outside in front of my house and I see my dog, my German short hair pointer, who's just over a year old, going nuts over this thing. And I get a, a quick look at this raccoon and it did not look right. Like, it looked like a typical case of rabies. I mean, its its face looked all kind of lopsided, uh, really numb. It didn't look like a raccoon. Um, and it's midday, which is, you know, not normal, you know, for a raccoon to be out and about. So here is my mother, my dog, and myself all kind of surrounding this raccoon. And it's not... It's not even phased at all, like, it's just doing its own thing. And if you don't know anything about the breed, they're hunting dogs, so if they see any small prey, they don't get phased by it at all. They, they are bred to, to point and, you know, find those animals. So, we're trying to get this, our dog away because you never know what to expect from a raccoon. And and uh, so my mother and I like get shovels and like a mop and try to get our dog away. We finally did take him inside, put him in his crate and we go back outside and we can't find the dang thing. Like we're like, oh shit, where did it go? So my mother uh, calls up our next door neighbors who are kind of outdoorsy people but they own firearms and so we're like okay you know we can you know get our neighbor and you know see if we can you know get this animal killed and he comes over with his uh hunting rifle it's, it's like it has like this dope uh cam on the outside but like we kind of talk to her and say like this is what has happened this is the deal you know can you help us and so like my neighbor and I go uh, circumnavigate our house trying to find this dang raccoon and we can't find it. So we go around again. And we finally find it at the edge of our property. And so he takes his hunting rifle from like, I would say about 30 yards scopes in and just snipes it and, it and it ends up still being alive so he goes up right up 
right in front of it and uh, puts us out of its misery. But we looked at it and it was not normal. It definitely had rabies. And I've heard this year rabies have been really bad uh, in North America, particularly in the Northeast. Um, lots of cases of people getting bitten by uh, animals infected with the rabies virus. And I actually just found out like uh, 30 minutes ago from uh, my mom that the neighbors across from us, they live like 300 yards away from us, like pretty far away. And we found out that their German shepherd got bitten by the same raccoon and uh, their dog was all bloody. Uh, so I think their dog is at a vet right now getting shot. So we're very fortunate our dog didn't, uh, didn't get uh, bitten. So that's been my early afternoon. Spent about... I spent about two hours cutting our lawn. And uh, now I'm on a ride. I decided to go through some mountain roads and just yeah, put on a motor vlog for today. So last night I was thinking about something to talk about today. And I decided I'm going to talk about my experience traveling the world. I have actually been to say around 14, 14 uh, other countries, most of them in Europe, um, but I decided to kind of tell you guys about my history of traveling, um, it's something I love to do, uh, kind of just exploring world around me is one of the things I love to do. If I could get paid to do it, you know that I would be, you know that I would be doing it as a full-time job, but I can't. So the first time I was ever abroad, I was on a cruise with my family, I believe in 2008. It was a big vacation we decided to do. I believe we went through the Disney cruise lines. It was a seven day long cruise uh, based out of Cape Canaveral in uh, Florida. And uh, I believe it was in March or so. And so it was like damn cold up here in the Northeast. So we were super happy to uh, get away and get to warmer weather for like our spring break and uh, so I believe first we went down to Key West Florida which is an awesome town I love it down there very quaint but lots of things to do and I think we spent a day at sea Went to the Grand Cayman Islands, or Islands, I can't remember which. Again, another great place because they don't have any sales tax. Uh, so if you ever want to buy any like luxury items, like a, a watch or jewelry, go get it there because you will save so much money. Um, what else? So I think then we spent another day at sea. And... We went to Cozumel, Mexico, which really doesn't count. It's like, I can't even, I can't remember if Cozumel, Mexico is an island or just a peninsula, but we went there and we were just there for uh, the day. But we went through some Mayan ruins, uh, which was pretty neat. And then I think we then went to uh, this island that Disney owns and then we came back. What is this about? Anyway, sorry, I got kind of distracted there. So, aside from that trip, it was a, 
but quite a bit of time since I then uh, went abroad uh, to travel. And then in 2014, um, actually a couple weeks after I had graduated from, from high school, I went on a school uh, sponsored trip to uh, Krakow, Poland, which sounds like it's kind of random from somebody who doesn't really know anything about uh, Poland at all. But uh, I am actually majority of a Polish descent. And so going to Poland was one of the things I've always wanted to do. Kind of explore what my, cult like my previous culture and heritage is like. And so I spent, I believe, about 11 or 12 days in Poland in total. But... I stayed with the group of guys. I was the oldest one in the group. The rest were not, they, they hadn't have graduated yet. We stayed in an apartment in the old town of Krakow, which is super, super cool. Like one of the coolest cities, European cities I've, I've been to. Um, and so I went to do a ton of things when I was there. Um, Inside of Poland, we explored the entire history of the city. Um, we went to some Latin masses. We explored the ancient, well, I don't know if they're ancient, but the salt mines, excuse me, within the city. Um, and we took a bunch of day trips. We went to the Auschwitz concentration camp, which was one of the one of the saddest places I've ever gone to. One of the saddest times I've ever been. Um, I don't think I've ever not spoken for that long a period of time. I didn't say a single word for like five hours while touring uh, the concentration camp. Very powerful place. If you're able to go there, do it. It, it puts a lot of things into perspective. Um, and where else should we go? We took a boat trip on the southernmost river uh, of Poland. I, I, it, divi it's, it divides it with another country. I'm completely blanking out on my geography right now. I think it borders Slovakia, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. And then we went to this mountain uh, village called Zakopane and I actually found out that this place was the birthplace of my great great grandfather my dad's grandfather and it was so freaking neat to find out that like this is where a lot of my heritage is from is from southern Poland so that was the Poland trip in a nutshell and last spring, I studied abroad in Madrid, Spain for an entire semester from just, uh, just early January to early May. So I was there for five months, which was pretty freaking cool. Um, I stayed with the homestay family uh, in downtown Madrid. And uh, I was studying with a, I think, St. Louis University of Madrid. They have a, St. Louis University has a campus there. And so I took all my classes there. Um, I actually, I actually was able to receive like full credit for almost all my courses. So it wasn't, there was no academic loss really. But uh, academics aside, I had the most amazing time in Europe. Um, Madrid itself is an amazing city. I was in the northwest part of the city where all the hospitals are, are called. Um, I, I want to say that my metro stop was uh, Criste, uh, Criste Rey or uh, 
something like that. I, I forget what the name of the metro stop was, but everybody kind of associated themselves with the metro stop when they were there. Um, but a very, very neat city. Um, Parque Retiro is amazing. I went to the Prado, went to uh, a bunch of other museums there. Uh, I partied a lot at night there. The nightlife there is insane. And I had a great time. I went with about 18 students from my... Uh, my uh, college that I, I attend. And so I knew a handful of them before the trip, which was really nice. Um, I, I was able to have like a background of people I could always hang out with. But in the midst of studying there, I went on a ton of weekend trips. And I was able to do this because one, it is super cheap to travel in between countries in Europe because the European Union is amazing. It's so easy to travel. And two, typically in Spain, uh, college students do not have classes on Fridays. And so I could leave either early Friday morning or late Thursday afternoon and spent a, a hefty amount of time actually within a country, which was awesome. I could, I could explore a country for a decent period of time and uh, it was a wonderful experience. And so I went to, the first place I went to was Italy. I went with uh, four other friends and uh, we stayed in uh, downtown Rome. We were like five blocks away from the Pantheon, which was super nice. So we had a great location. Um, but that was amazing. We actually had went we, we had planned to go to Florence, but I missed the train because I forgot something from my uh, the apartment we were staying at, and so I went back to get him. By the time I came back, uh, I couldn't get on the train. It had left, <laughs> which was kind of a bummer. It wasn't too expensive of a, of a train ticket. It was only like 35 bucks. Not too big of a loss. Next, I went to Amsterdam with a group of like 10 people and we all stayed on a boat that was uh, at a dock. <laughs> and Amsterdam is a ton of fun. Um, we did a ton of stuff there. We were, we were kind of north of the main part of the city because it was so expensive to stay there in the Netherlands. But uh, we had a ton of fun there. All of the things that you do in Amsterdam that people typically do, we did. And it was a ton of fun. And if you don't know what I mean, you can look that up uh, and I'll leave it at that. But Amsterdam, such a fun place. The uh, Heineken is so much better there. Oh my God, it's so premium. It's amazing. After that, I went to Morocco, and that was on a, uh, a mandatory school trip, which actually was the best mandatory trip I've ever gone on. Um, that was with uh, my classmates, and it was a five-day excursion type trip, and so we took the train from Madrid down to uh, a southern port city. I can't remember what it what it's called. But we saw like the Rock of Gibraltar, which is like the tiniest, most unimpressive rock on the planet. No offense, any Brits out there. <laughs> uh, and then we took a boat across the gap in between Morocco and uh, Spain, and we arrived at uh, a port city in the north. I'm blanking out. I'll, I'll write it down here. There's so much I'm, my memory's going backtrack right now. Um, and uh, 
we essentially went from north to south in uh, Morocco by bus, which was very long. And it was pretty cold when we were down there. It wasn't really warm. It was a social issues focused uh, trip. So it's a little bit different. Uh, we met with students there um, in, in various cities. And we spent a large part of our time in uh, Rabat, which is the capital of Morocco. And uh, one afternoon, we spent a weekend with some college students and had a great time. We, uh, I got a chance to listen to Moroccan rap from uh, some students, which was like the coolest thing ever. They got some dope flow, I'm not gonna lie. We met, we, uh, one day we went to a mountain village in uh, the Atlas Mountains and we spoke to some farmers there in this really small town. I mean, this, this town is literally on the top of a mountain and we had like the hike to get there. And we had uh, like kind of, a, we had a translator that spoke the local dialect and translated to us which was really neat. I got to ask him questions and our translator uh, translated and it was really cool. I was like talking to this guy. And the farmer that we uh, spent most of our time with had literally never traveled farther than 25 miles from his home ever. It was a wild change of perspective. Uh, I mean, just thinking that from anybody here in the US, that, that that's unheard of, but that, that's very common in these mountain villages. People spend their time there. We talked about marriage there, we talked re about a religion, we talked about the king, um, we talked about everything. And one of our last days there, we went to this town called Shafshawin, which is called, was nicknamed the Blue City. And it was painted blue uh, in, the 30, in the late 1930s to signal for any Jews that they could seek um, shelter there and be protected against any uh, German soldiers and uh, you know not be deported into any concentration camps, which was really neat. Anyway, that was Morocco. And uh, another weekend I went to Switzerland specifically Geneva, or Geneva if you're American. And uh, I went there because one, the round trip flight was only a hundred bucks, which is super cheap. And I stayed at a place. Uh, I stayed on a flat with a, uh, a man in, in his 40s. He was relatively kind of broke, but he put a place on Airbnb for uh, a bed and basically shelter. And it only cost me a hundred bucks for three nights. And so I said, I'll take it. One of the main reasons I went there was that the Geneva uh, Motor Show was happening uh, that particular weekend. And if any of you aren't any car people out there, the Geneva Auto Show is essentially the Olympics for car shows. It is the top tier of every show out there. Uh, and that was amazing. I just got to sit in supercars. I got to sit in Audi R8s, Lamborghinis, Ferraris. Um, some guy w at the Ford uh, kiosk kind of area was trying to sell me, I kid you not, was trying to get me the test ride. <laughs> A uh, Focus RS. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I'd love to, but I'm only uh, like 20 years old. <laughs> I, and he's like, no, no, I know you were in Madrid, but I can set up a test right there. I'm like, I, I'm the, thank you for the offer, but I, I can't afford this car ever. <laughs> thank, thank you though. But that was an awesome experience. I, I, uh, I actually technically went in France that weekend as well. I crossed the border to uh, this mountain, which overlooks the city of Geneva called Mont Sorove. And so I took the gondola up there, got the hike, hike around it. And it was snowing at the top of the mountain, like a heavy snowstorm. And at the bottom, it was like 45 degrees. So that was pretty neat. Um, but I had a great time there. Where else did I go? 
I guess I'll tell you my favorite place I went to. In early March, I actually went to Istanbul, Turkey for a weekend by myself. I actually had went there the same weekend. I was actually in the air, in the airplane back. The same time that the bombing happened in the capital, which is Ankara, if you don't remember, if you remember that, that's, I was literally mid-air uh, when, when that happened. My, my parents were freaked. I was supposed to go with uh, a couple other people, but they bailed out, bailed out on me because they were scared to go there. And I told myself, hell, I'm probably going to have only one chance in my life to go to Istanbul. And I had, and I had known a lot about the culture from studying its art previously. And so I said to myself, I am not going to let this deter me. I am going there and I am fulfilling my dream to go to Turkey. So I did it and I stayed at an Airbnb with probably some of the mo my favorite people I've ever met in my life. Uh, the room that I stayed at, word for word, I am telling the truth that it was only $22 a night. I had a private room. I had two amazing young hosts. They're in their uh, uh, lower 30s. Spoke fluent English, uh, but they're local Turks the most fun people ever have. Um, my host, Sem, a uh, kind of a uh, list of things that I definitely should do when I'm here, you know, like the typical things like Hagia Sophia, Blue Mosque, uh, Egyptian Spice Market, um, the nightlife, everything. And uh, so I did pretty much everything I'd ever want to do there. I went to Hagia Sophia and I had wrote a research paper about it the previous semester and so I actually got to go inside of it. Most amazing, gorgeous building I have ever seen. Uh, Hagia Sophia was built in about 300 uh, CE and was one of the largest enclosed structures for like a thousand years um, but it is absolutely gorgeous inside if you ever get a chance to go to Turkey you have to see Hagia Sophia and uh, the Blue Mosque oh my god they're incredible but I had the, the nightlife and Istanbul is so much fun. Um, the last night I was there, I was out till four in the morning with my host and some friend, well, and some people I met that are from the Netherlands, uh, from Amsterdam. And like, we had the most fun together. I just met these people that, that night and um, um, I actually felt safer there than I did when, than whenever I was in Geneva. And it's a shame because uh, the Turkish culture and Istanbul itself is such a wonderful city. I met some of the nicest people on the planet there. The culture is so friendly. That and Mor the Moroccan culture. Uh, it's, it's amazing and it's a shame that all the terrorism happens there. I went to um, Portugal for spring break. Uh, I went there with three friends and we went to uh, Lisbon, which is actually called Lisboa uh, by the Portuguese and Spanish. Then we took trains pretty much everywhere else. We went down to Porto, sorry, north of Porto, and then we went the whole way down to the southern portion to a city called Lagos. And um, I enjoyed the Portuguese culture so much. 
it's so gorgeous. Lisbon is such a historic but uh, vibrant city. Architecture is amazing. Porto is amazing. The port wine, I went to one port wine tour. It's so good. Um, the, the food there is really good too. Very uh, seafood focused. And uh, Lagos in the South was like this kind of beach town. It kind of felt like South Carolina, Georgia weather. But again, very fun city. Um, there's just so much to talk to you about. I don't want to make this video too long. And the final place I went to was Greece. I went to Athens. And again, I went there by myself, actually. I had an amazing time in Athens. I, I decided to stay at a regular old hotel. But uh, I saw everything there. I saw the Acropolis. I saw Temple of Zeus. Um... I explored everything in Athens, um, and the final full day that I was in Athens, uh, whenever I was in Greece, I decided to take a boat to the island of Aegina, which is about 45 minutes southwest of Athens, you know, by boat. And Aegina is a gorgeous island. It's actually known for its pistachios. They have this famous uh, dessert dish there called pistachio pie. Oh my god, it is so freaking good. <laughs> Ever get a chance to go to Aegina, get that. Um, but whenever I was there, I decided to rent a uh, moped and take it around the entire island because it was only like 15 bucks for to rent it the entire day. So I did that and I ended up riding about 35 or uh, 35 to 40 miles worth of road whenever I was there. And my favorite part about Aegina, um, I had like downloaded the map of the island before I actually went there. And uh, I heard about this place called the Temple of Aphia, which is this old Greek temple that's actually at the top of uh, one of the peaks on the island. And so I finally found out where this place was, and so I ended up hiking up to this place, and I got to see this ancient temple. And if anybody here is an art major or minor, and knows anything about Greek, uh, architecture. The Temple of Aphi is one of the most important temples um, around uh, the end of the Archaic uh, period to the Classical period. And it is a unique temple because it has this mix of uh, two different styles of Greek architecture. But I, I saw this place and I actually ended up writing a 15 page research paper about it and, uh, the next semester. And so that was one of the coolest things when I was there is that studying, being able to study uh, works of art and architecture before um, I even got to visit, you know, said place, and then I get to see it, and I just, seeing some of these places in real life is just incredible. I mean, absolutely amazing. And uh, at the end of May, I came back. And so there you go, guys. That's the story of me and traveling. Um, being able to travel around the world has really allowed my eyes to be open wide. And 
to really see what other cultures are like and it's really allowed me to to be an open-minded individual um, I'm extremely grateful for that Uh, because especially where I live here in uh, southwestern Pennsylvania, it's a very closed-minded area. Not to get political or anything, but uh, being there abroad has just taught me so much about how to not judge people and realizing that Pretty much everybody around the world shares a set of common interests and goals in life. And being able to recognize that fact allows you to relate to anybody pretty much from any culture, even if you can't speak a language, their language, and they can't speak yours. Um, it really allows you to realize that we're all human, and treat everybody as your own. Treat other other people as if they're family. And uh, you will be surprised about how other treat people will treat you. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this mode of vlogs. You know, more storytelling from me. Um, comment below, where have you guys been in the world? Um, and where do you want to travel? Personally, I would love to have the opportunity to go to um, Central and East Asia. I have some friends that live in Taiwan and uh, Shanghai and South Korea and even Japan. And I would love to have the opportunity to uh, see what that culture is like. I would love to also get a chance to go to South America because one, I speak Spanish relatively well, um, but but also I, I'd love to just again see what that culture is like. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good rest of your day. If you like the video, feel free to like it and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more material from me.